Hello and welcome to the 56th video in this series programming a chess engine in JavaScript. So bringing back the good old GUI here and moving it away, let's see if in this video we can actually extend our click square function to actually tell us what square we've actually clicked. And things get a little bit tricky here because, and again I'm sorry if this, you know all this already, but we get our click in absolute absolute coordinates when we actually click on the board. So when, although we've got our effective zero, zero here at the top left corner of the board, when I click on the top left corner of the board, just inside the boundary, you see in the console here, the last click I did, it says it's 72 by 125. So when we want to work out which square is clicked on, first of all, we have to find out what position the origin is of the board and then work from there. And then we can simply get the X and the Y and divide by 60 to get the file and rank. So going into the code and into the click square, the first thing I'm going to do is get the position of the board. So I'm going to get a var position and just use jQuery here, good old jQuery, to tell us what position the board is in. And remember, we've got our selector for the board like so, because the div is called that. So this will give us the top left hand corner position in X and Y of the board. So the way I'm going to do this then is I'm going to say, OK, we'll have a page X and a page Y where we clicked and a worked X and a worked Y, which are the X and Y for the top left of the board. Um, so I have a worked X equals, and I'm now going to round the all of it down. The one thing I don't want is any um, decimal points in these numbers because I want to work out an absolute coordinates. So I'm going to overdo the math.floor stuff here. So I want the position left, position dot left from our position variable here to tell us the x of the board. And then I also want the position top to tell us the y coordinate of the board as well. So that should be fairly self-explanatory what's going on there. So how far from the left are we and how far from the top are we? And the next thing we have is I'm going to do exactly the same thing as this except I'm going to say that, uh, let's see, I want to say that page x equals math.floor page x and that page y equals math.floor page y. So they get rid of any decimal points here because we're going to be dividing these up to get the files and, and ranks. So now I've got those. The only slight problem we have on our GUI is that, of course, rank, the, the, the files are okay. So if we take our coordinate and divide by 60, we'll get the file number from 0 to 7. The ranks, though, will be back to front because the coordinates start at the 8th rank, so we'll need to take into account that. So I'll now say var file, and of course I could have done all of this in much less much less code, but for the sake of explanation it's easier to do it like this. We're going to do a math.floor, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the page x, so the whole page x, subtracted from the worked x, or well, subtract the worked x from the page x, so that effectively gives us how far down the board from the board's origin, so how far across the board from the board's origin we've clicked. And now I can divide that by 60 to get our file, because we know the squares are a size of 60. And again, this is, in terms of coding practice, very bad hard coding in numbers, but it's just for the GUI. So. And then for rank, we'll do exactly the same thing. The only thing is, things are upside down. So we'll do our math floor with our page y and our worked y divided by 60. But because things are upside down, we have to effectively flip the rank. So we'll do 7 minus the result of that to get our rank. And then last but not least, we can get our square using our file rank to square that we have defined in devs.h using the file and rank in this way. And all being well, we should be able to say console.log and clicked square and we'll leverage our print square function here to print the square. 
Okay, so that's all we have then for Click Square. And I'm just very quickly going to go into the browser and call a refresh and just uh, click a couple of squares very quickly to check that it doesn't think it says page Y is not defined. Why is page Y not defined? Amazing. I never noticed that in the previous value, uh, video. So I'll just refresh again the browser and click. Okay, good. And I'll just bring it across the console here while well, hanging on. I'll take the console away. Let's click. I've just clicked B6, but let's click uh, C3, E4, and G5. And you can see that I've clicked indeed C3, E4, and G5. Good, so that's one part done. What would be nice as well, of course, is to make the square dark when we actually select it. You remember that inside the CSS we have a square selected um, property here on class with a property setting a darkish background color. So let's actually implement that function as well. I'm just going to put that above the clicked uh, square here. I'm going to say function and call it set square selected. Now the slight issue here, or the slight complication in this one is, we know, need to know which square we've selected. Now, if I, if I was doing, say, a GUI um, in Objective-C on the Mac or something, which, which I have been doing, I would simply subclass the image that's been added, and in that I would add a property that tells me what square the image is on. So I would simply need to loop through the images, find which one is, has the same square as the square sent in as an argument, and simply set the color. But here I haven't subclassed any square or anything like that, so I actually have to find which square, uh, whether we, which which square needs to be selected by looping through all of the squares. So using jQuery, I'll just find all of our items with a square, and then use the dot each so we can loop through each of them, and then put a semicolon here before I do anything else, otherwise confusion reigns. And then I'm just going to say function and with the index of each one and then just some curly braces as usual and then the code inside. So what we're going to say is, is for this square object here, if our ranks board, so our rank from our square is what I'm asking here. So if our rank from our square is equal to 7 minus, remember we have to flip the rank, and math oops, dot round, because I want to round this, and to be very, very careful here, the item in question, the square in question's position, and the top, divided by 60. So what this whole line effectively is doing here is condensing all of the code that was done separated out here into variables so it's a sort of a condensed way of doing it so i'm saying if the rank of our square sent in is on the same rank as the square that we've clicked finding its position divided by 60 and doing 7 minus the result and obviously now what i need to do is i need to ask the question about the file as well and i'm just looking here to make sure i've got the the brackets all set so if those two are equal and and then what I want to say is files board and square is equal to and I can just take this code now I think and drop this in here and put that on the end and put some curly braces here and files board here I need to do position dot left divided by 60 then what I can do is, is for the this object, I can add the class of square selected, which I'll just go into styles here and copy. And all being well, this should then select the square. So I'll just take the square selected code now and drop this down the bottom of here and get the square selected in that way and save and I'm not convinced I've typed this all out co uh, correctly so get confused with the brackets and things but let's see what happens.
So now if I bring the browser up and refresh and click on a square, I've got an error, no method round, oh it's lowercase round isn't it? Save again, bring back the browser, refresh and click, and now you can see that the squares we're clicking on are indeed being selected. Good, so one more thing we can actually add in here is we can actually deselect a square and I'm not going to actually add that functionality uh, to, to the board right now, that will come in later on, but we can actually at least say deselect square inside here. And again what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the squares on the board. It's exactly the same essentially as set square selected and again this could probably be combined in a much better way uh, except here we're simply going to say remove class square selected in this way and I'll make now the rather grand assumption that that's all going to be working okay. Okay so we've got our select square and deselect square and our click square working so in the next video we can actually carry on about uh, trying to interpret the or at least get the user's move input, move input coordinates. So thanks very much for watching, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.